Good evening. Welcome to the Monday, March 27th meeting of the Green Bay Plan Commission. What's your pleasure regarding the minutes? Moved to approve. Second. We've got a motion and a second to approve. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, new business. Item number one. Um, first, I want to welcome everybody. And if you want to speak tonight, go ahead and fill out one of these forms. So it'll be on the table up here. And um, when it's your turn to speak, your name will be called and come on forward to the podium. And um, try not to repeat what other people say and be as brief as you can, but we want to hear what you have to say too. So thank you. Item number one. Consideration with possible action on the request to rezone 721 Nicolay Avenue from low density residential to office residential submitted by Mach 4 Engineering on behalf of KTS Investments, LLC. Okay, so kind of the best way to orient ourselves to this site is this is the uh, Tower Clock Medical Business. Last year, about a year ago now, we rezoned uh, this home and that house was removed for proposed parking lot expansion. Um, they have now purchased the next lot south um, and found that this lot was not sufficient for their needs. They want to do a combined parking lot on both the lots. Uh oh, there we go. So um, this is a comprehensive plan. Comprehensive does call for residential. However, with commercial on the comprehensive plan next to it, we're kind of squaring off a block and kind of drawing a line in the sand of here where it feels commercial appropriate. <laughs> with adjacent land uses, the staff is comfortable with the fact that the comprehensive plan did call for uh, residential. And here we have the zoning map. So we have OR for the existing tower clock, its parking lot, the lot north of it we zoned up, office residential, and the subject lot today with residential to the south of it. Yes. Uh, the lot to the that's right here is already commercial. Um, it's off the residential. That's what we did about a year ago. Oh, so it's all done. Yep. So okay. That that lot was already rezoned. Geez, I should uh, remember that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the staff is recommending approval of the request. Thank you. But yes. Yes. So I know that last year when we talked about this and they did that one lot, they had a lot of green space and a lot of buffering with the neighborhood. I guess what are their plans now? Did they already do that buffering and now they So they it? will, they, because this is just a rezoning, we generally don't condition it. Oh. Um, but they will have to submit and go through the standard site plan review process to put in that parking lot, including a landscape plan, drainage plans, all of those things associated with it. They will have to meet all those code requirements for fencing and landscaping them. We do have a landscape plan that's on file. They have already submitted um, their site plan for review for the parking lot. And it does include some um, generous landscaping along the south side of the property. Yes, so it. my question is a direct follow-up to that. Is it still the case that even with that uh, preliminary landscape plan, there's still over the 60% max on impermeable so surface? So that as of right now, the plan that they're showing is has 65% impervious surface. Okay. Um, so as we point out in your staff report, they will have to either one, come up to some impervious surface options to lower that, or they would have to go to the Board of Appeals. Um, that plan cannot be approved as is. They will need to make modifications to it either by adding green space, reducing impervious through other options, or seeking a variance from the Board of Appeals. Okay. okay. Hopefully the green space since they're running up against a residential area. Any other questions? Come on. Thank you. We do have somebody here who would like to speak. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you. Bob? Sure. Bob Mack? Yes. Bob Mock, Mock 4 Engineer. Um, I can answer any specific questions you may have on the site plan that we've generated to date, but uh, overall, the plan that they had, that we had previously approved and for the previous rezoning, I think they had a net gain of 14 or 15 parking stalls. And with the dimensions, it just wasn't enough to meet their needs. So they acquired the next lot, and we're gonna add a net gain of, I think, 35 with this. Being able to add the double cell parking uh, really adds a lot to it. We're aware of being over the green space by five or six percent. So um, 
plan right now is to apply for a variance for that. If not, if we can't get the variance, we'll probably be looking at doing some in, uh, some pervious pavement or some other attenuation like that. Mm -hmm. um, we will work with staff and with the neighbors to create the correct buffer. There's a 15-foot side yard which we're meeting according to ordi ordinance there and combination of fencing <coughs> and landscaping. The neighbors have some existing fence through there and I know their house is fairly close to the property line so mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we buffer that accordingly. Um, so if you have any other questions about the site plan, I'd be happy to address those. So again, um, you're thinking about some of the pervious um, pavement possibilities yes, that is a, there. A potential Are solution. Are you also considering additional green space? I mean, you're you're going from 13 that wasn't enough additional parking spaces to double that. Um, the if we were to take it and just if you look, have you seen a copy of the site plan? I believe this is okay. the one you're referring to. Yeah. Spatially, to get that to work. Um, to get the green space to work, they'd have to take off all of these on the east end. So they'd lose probably by the time you add a couple more in there. You have a seven or eight stall net loss, which I think is too much for their comfort level. So um, I think we'll, we'll look at other options. That, uh, you know, if we cannot get the variance to go for the pervious pavement or something like that. The last plan we had for the previous edition, we were using pervious pavement as a stormwater treatment device. We don't need to do that on this one. We have enough area in that central green space island to put in a, a landscape biofilter in there. Mm -hmm. So um, if we do do pervious pavement, it wouldn't be specifically for uh, stormwater treatment. How close is it to that uh, house uh, just to the south of there? Uh, we're 15 feet to the property line, and I believe they're around four or five feet from the property line with their house. So about 20 feet from the house. Uh, 15 feet from the property line, which is the required buffer adjacent to residential. Okay. Have you heard anything from that property owner? I received one inquiry um, they didn't specify which home they were um, located in. Mm -hmm. um, they mainly just had some questions, wanted a copy of the site plan. That's it. Um, the property to the south, I believe, uh, is currently being used as a rental. Um, we oh. have the owner's contact information as we... And he was uh, notified of all this. Okay. Yeah, uh, but we will reach out to them to coordinate the landscaping and the fencing because they do have some existing fence through there and um, they probably don't want our fence immediately adjacent to the property line and have a fence four or five feet out their window, so. And I see that you are planning Arbor Vitae right along the area where their, this lot would come right. closest to their house. And that, we'd like to get their feedback and see if that's a better solution than a fence for them. Mm -hmm. So from our standpoint, it really doesn't matter. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, thanks. We do have two other people here who indicated they do not want to speak. Would, is that um, still the case, or would you like to speak? Okay. We turn. Mm -hmm. Move to return. Second. Move to approve. Thank you. Do you have a motion to approve? Any other discussion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. <coughs> Thanks. This will go to City Council. The council is next Wednesday, the 5th, and I believe this is a rezoning, so it'll be a first reading. Okay. Uh, I'll go through the process. If it's advanced to the third reading, that will be held on the 25th. Wait, this off the top of my brain. It'll be the third Tuesday. third Tuesday. And then what time? 7 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Okay, item number two, did consideration with possible action on the request to rezone a 10-foot wide parcel northeast and adjacent to 2603 <coughs> Nicolay Drive from general commercial to low density residential submitted by Ross R. Kornowski on behalf of Roderick J. and Cheryl A. Michaud, property owners. Okay, uh, this area may look familiar. We mm -hmm. actually 
talked about the comp plan amendment last meeting. Um, so there's a small 10 foot wide strip that was owned by the university in here. Um, they have quick claim that to the property owner to the south. Um, so the comp plan, obviously it has not been amended because we have not had final reading on it yet. So this was the existing comp plan that called for commercial. If you remember, we changed this to residential and these to residential. So it is in a general consistency with that plan. This lot is specifically called out for commercial, but when we talk about a 10 foot wide lot, comp plan is generalization. Um, presently, we have the commercial zoning of the bed and breakfast site, commercial zoning of this small 10 foot wide strip, residential to the south and to the north. Um, at the time the, the staff board was generated, we had received uh, no one either for or against it, so we do recommend approval of the request. Thank you. Are there questions for Mark? So they're going to combine that with their lot, and what is the process for that? So that's just done through deed recordation. Okay. Actually, with a quick claim, do they even need to record it, or is that kind of the end of it? Uh, they still have to record it. They're just still still to record it. Okay. They probably, probably have already okay. done it, to yeah. be totally great. Yes. So, and I guess it's likely that the comp plan is going to be amended, but if for whatever crazy reason it wasn't, whatever we do tonight wouldn't, would affect it. It would affect this. <laughs> The comp plan being changed would not affect this. Okay. This is just a straight rezoning. So. Okay. Yes? Uh, I don't see any zip 17 09 letter in my agenda. Oh, you don't have this? Oh, okay. All right, I got that. That's what it is. Yep, that's all it is. That's all we provided. There's no site plan or anything because they're just taking that 10 foot basically oh, wide okay. strip of grass. I a letter from somebody. No, I mean, and that's it's just this is the letter we send out. Oh, okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to know is I was not at the meeting of the last time when you redid the zoning on the residential and commercial for the comp plan. Yeah, and the property that's next to this is definitely commercial, and it's not reflected in the minutes, and that concerns me. This is commercial today. Um, this right. is ch it's proposed to be changed to residential at the last meeting. Yeah. So we'll be going to third reading in the uh, May 4th meeting, I believe, of the council for the comp plan change, where this would be the residential and this would be residential within the comp plan. I realize that that was commercial on that strip. Uh, the only thing I was concerned about is the first property from the north. I think it should be reflected in the minutes that's remaining commercial. It's not hit hard enough as far as I was concerned. In, in our, what we're doing today or the previous? The previous meeting. Okay, yeah, I because the previous, meeting. the legal description of the previous didn't include this, it just included these. Right, okay, all right, thank you. It was not part of the petition, that commercial. Right, right. okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Do we have anyone to speak? We do, we have a couple people here to speak. <coughs> Motion open the floor. Second. Thank you. I'm John Michaud. I don't want to go through stuff that's been rehashed. I just took some pictures of the, of the property. This, Thank you. This is a fence line. This is the commercial piece to the north. And this 10 feet has been part of my yard for literally over almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. And um, settled my claim at university uh, for adverse possession. So obviously I'm for changing the zoning. And then I just have a couple of letters from property um, to the north of Georgia, so couldn't be here tonight. And the letter from the Nicolay Drive, the president of the association, um, stating that they're in favor of the change. Thank you. Thank you. And Diane Hireman? <coughs> no, I, I really didn't want to talk. I just wanted to say that it was my anniversary two weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that debacle. Yeah. <laughs> How many years? <laughs> I never speak in another one of these meetings again. <laughs> you want that in minutes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does anybody else was it there anyone else here to speak on this issue? Yes. Just to add that the all alder, alder, I moved to approve the amendment to the zoning and the comp plan. Thank you. Motion to turn the normal business. Second. Thank you. Motion approved. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We you have your whole yard now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Item number three, consideration with possible action on the request by Alderman Tom Duane to have sidewalks that are ordered by the city for new construction on homes or other developments be done only after completion of that project and not to be forced to put in sidewalks on empty lots. Recommendation is to receive and place on file. So second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Do you need to know anything about that at this point? So I talked with Alder Duane, uh, talked with Public Works Director Greer, uh, just addressing, I think, uh, what are some of his concerns. Um, bigger picture in terms of uh, operationalizing this, uh, I think administratively there's some things that can address what he was looking for. Um, from a code perspective, we're probably going to be taking a look at Chapter 14, mm -hmm. um, which deals with sidewalks and other things, uh, probably later this spring, this summer. Just, um, you know, we've had some major revisions a while ago, and it's time to, I think, take a look at it again. And, and so if there's changes that are recommended, uh, that will be covered uh, through those, through the look at Chapter 14. Okay, thank you. Um, informational item number four business improvement district updates on revenue and expenditures based on 2015 and 2016 operating plans and audit reports. Thank you. Um, so just to rehash a little bit what we do with the bids each year is in October we have everybody come through and give us their budget for the upcoming year. Um, then in this time of year we have them report back on what they did in that last year budget time. So this year we're looking at 15 and 16 because we changed the process a little bit so Planning Commission never got to look at the 15 numbers and accomplishments. Um, so within your packet you have these charts here. Basically this is just a breakdown of what kind of businesses open, expanded, maybe had some exterior renovations done, anything like that. Um, they also know some of the new housing units that may have been added and then any volunteer hours that they've logged. So we do have everyone here that's representing the bids. They're just going to come up and review some of the numbers and some of their major accomplishments. So that way you have an ability to look at that. Uh, this is informational only, but if you do have any questions, feel free to ask either myself, Wendy, or anyone here to represent the bids. We need to take any no, action now. Nope, they good. just, whoever wants to go first, jump in. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, <laughs> Um, hi, Leah Weicker with the Military Avenue Business District. Um, so this is my full, like I've completed a full year as executive director there and I think um, for sure the volunteer hours reflect that, um, doing more activities, we have more people involved and um, someone made a comment on, on Facebook saying, I'm loving the new vibe on military. And it was like, okay, that's exactly, <laughs> we couldn't pay you to do that. So that was good to hear. Um, I think everything we do keep continues to build on that. Um, the numbers for business improvements um, was down, and I think that was just because um, Broadway Auto had such a huge one the year before in, in 2015. Mm -hmm. There's one that was in excess of a million. Um, this coming year, not right now, Aldi's is under a major renovation. I would guess that's going to hit pretty close, too. So I think there is indication that people continue to invest in the area. And with the um, uh, Titletown District coming up on that end, and we also received the 50000 from the tax, um, or the stadium tax district money, um, that's really exciting to, again, drive traffic up, um, up our up up our district because it looks very residential down there. So um, we got that and we're kind of finalizing some temporary designs. Um, I shouldn't say finalizing. We're getting down to the, the designs that we will choose from. Um, and so that's kind of an exciting prospect too for us as that gets completed. We also did a winter market um, this year, mm -hmm. um, just a small one, second and fourth Tuesdays, or second and fourth Sundays. And um, that's been really well received. I think um, people really appreciate the ability to get rid of their product or to spread their product. And if they have a consistent schedule and how they can do that, that's really helpful for our local farmers. And that's um, within 100 miles. I require the, the product to be do um, created or grown or whatever within that district. So within that area. Any questions? Yeah. What accounts for that wonderful rise in the volunteer hours? The markets. Okay, mm -hmm. I thought that might be it. Yeah. I also noticed that you got some help. The statement here says from East High School students? Or yes, 
isn't that lovely that yeah. they see this as a part of their city rather yep. than belonging to the West? And actually, I just recruited them to come back. So they have a, um, a really good group, and they have, they can pay for their own transportation and everything, <laughs> which is kind of nice on my part. Yeah. I do buy T-shirts for them, um, which mm -hmm. is, again, advertising for us. They say Military Avenue, and they're very bright. So when they're going down the street, um, it's also a safety Super. safety issue. But, well, congratulations. Yeah. They were fun to work with. Uh, congrats on the building renovations. Uh, you're you're a star here, basically. And I think that's uh, that shows the reflects on the hours spent and uh, moving ahead. It really looks great. Good. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for everything you're doing. You're doing a wonderful job. And thank you. I enjoyed your market too this winter. Good. So, yes. <laughs> she had to work at one day. Those <laughs> 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 so volunteer hours, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Thank you. Ready? I shopped. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is out of town on vacation, yeah. so I got signed up for this. So <laughs> um, I'll flip through the 2015 accomplishment sheet. I think you guys all have, and then flip through the 2016. I just did some quick highlights on it. Um, 2015, we kicked off our new website um, and released a new video that we used for marketing to. Um, have our businesses used to get people to come down. We got our permanent bike racks in for the Saturday Farmers Market. Um, the streetscape kind of kicked off there with a $12,000 investment. And then we got two new murals um, put up in 2015. Mm -hmm. And then the townhomes, Winnie Park townhomes, were in their final phase. Uh, 2016, um, holiday decorations, Farmers Market banners, and planters uh, continued to go out in the streets throughout their seasons. Um, we partnered with OBI and military for the Small Business Saturday and worked with the Press Gazette on that and then um, Fox Community Credit Union also helped with that. Um, we do network with your neighbor with uh, on Broadway so that changes each time we do it three different locations that we rotate throughout the districts featuring businesses that come in um, typically new ones to come and kind of talk about what they did who they are that sort of thing. Um, I think you guys all got these flyers too yeah so we uh, printed these for downtown um, Old Main Streets will be coming soon as well but those um, kind of talk about who we are so we can get those to our businesses there's a lot that we do interact with but then there's kind of some of the silent ones that we want to make sure that they really understand what we're doing um, let's see what else we have two new murals in 2016 and we have our one in the hopper for 2017 and I think our events are Succeed in going well and continuing to improve. Yeah, there's another mural coming around. Can you tell us where it's going to be? Um, no, it's uh, in the on the Palms building. Okay. He's got it oh. primed already, so it's Great. ready. And they, I think, they interviewed the artist last week, so they picked, they got it down to the final one. Okay. So hopefully this spring it'll go up. Okay, they're wonderful. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks. For the presentation. Hello, Ryan Johnson at Thon Broadway. Um, I think for us, you know, the biggest thing um, is, is, as many of you probably are aware, um, we've had uh, some changes within our organization over the last couple of years. And so, um, uh, so quite honestly, when Stephanie emailed me this, I said, well, gee, for 2015 accomplishments, um, I really don't know because I wasn't there. I, I've been with Thon Broadway for less than a year now. Um, and so what we did is we gathered our data from the state. Uh, we're required as a Main Street program. We're the only Main Street program in Green Bay. So we are required to report data to the state, and that's where, where I procure, uh, excuse me, procured that information. Um, and, and of course, looking at 2016, that was data that we were able to accurately reflect uh, internally. We were able to pull that. So um, some of our bigger accomplishments, um, it, it quite honestly, wouldn't be necessarily in a growth arena. It would just be maintaining what we have. Um, as you guys know, the farmer's market is, is uh, very large successful event uh, that we continue to curate and, and take care of um, and that's where a lot of our efforts are, are invested um, along with a number of our other events uh, working with our businesses um, and, and, and just like the other districts do um, especially when it comes to navigating City Hall and, and kind of helping to be a conduit um, to get the appropriate permits and, and take appropriate actions in that arena. Uh, development for us is really focused uh, on building foundation right now. Um, as I'm sure Kevin would attest, his office in particular has been working um, very aggressively with a number of developers, and I suspect that in the next three years, 
uh, you're going to see some substantial growth in these numbers um, by virtue of a lot of the work that, that Kevin's office has done and, and other city staff, which we're obviously very grateful for. Um, and we continue to invest some time in as well, um, working directly with them and, and trying to recruit some new businesses into the district. So, um, and, and I think another area too that a lot of times when you look at um, downtown, uh, historically, uh, a lot of it's been, gee, there's, there's downtown Green Bay and Old Main, and then there's on Broadway, and there's kind of like this, this separation that exists between our organizations. And I think Brianna and, and Jeff Marcus as well would attest to the fact that uh, since coming on board, there's been a lot stronger collaboration between our districts, and, and we've come together um, to collaborate on a couple of things this year uh, that you guys will be hearing about in the media very shortly. Uh, but that's, to me, a very exciting um, uh, positive movement in the right direction when it comes to you know people externally looking at us as one town town and not necessarily having to be this segregated uh, uh, downtown that we have here in Green Bay so we're very excited to be able to work together in that front and we do some some things with Leah as well um, and, and she's just a tremendous asset to our community so happy to take questions I have a feeling I know which one you're gonna ask volunteer hours <laughs> Right, <laughs> that's actually off the charts. Uh, so that's Stephanie emailed awesome. me about that, and I said, I said, look, Stephanie, um, all I can tell you is what was reported to the state. And so for me to, to change that number uh -huh. would basically be making a number up. Um, and, and I didn't think that that was appropriate. And instead, at least I can vet, uh, back up that that was a number that was reported to the state prior to me coming on board. Mm -hmm. That's eight full-time positions. I don't know. Um, I don't know how that number was generated. I really don't. Maybe a um, typo that they just doubled the four. At yeah, land. yeah. I, and, and I did call the state on it instead of four. Yeah. Yeah, I did call the state on it, and, and they also verified that that number was at least four to five times greater than any other Main Street <laughs> program in the state. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, what I can tell you is that fifteen hundred hours is an accurate number. That's a number that I worked on myself. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that comes largely in part mm -hmm. from from the markets as well as uh, we also do include. Um, hours that are invested into committee work yeah. and so so that number is reflected in there as well and if the previous year was 1600 instead of 16,000 it's still darn good yep so we, we do we have, have uh, volunteers in yeah we have a great really volunteer base so, <laughs> terrific Any other questions? good job great yes thank you thank you Anybody here to speak? Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Bravo, bravo. Yes, exactly. Very good. So, bravo. <laughs> Thanks for coming in tonight, too. Um, other directors update on council actions. Okay, so our last meeting. Um, two ordinances were approved at their third reading, uh, Ordinance 5-17, uh, that was the signage, uh, that was uh, changes requested for over at Lambeau Field, and then uh, Zoning Ordinance 2-17, uh, that rezoned property at 606 South Broadway from General Commercial to Light Industrial uh, Office, to, uh, excuse me, to Office Residential, uh, that's the old White Store building. Um, just uh, aside from that, we are still waiting uh, for some additional materials uh, to move forward with the conditional use that was uh, asked for at the same meeting when this process started. We have not received those yet, that's my understanding. So um, it still works or it's still been tabled until we receive those materials and bring it forth. Um, as for the rest of council actions, everything else on the report um, was approved uh, that included uh, to staff request about uh, zoning code for uh, CP procedure about items for sale, um, the sidewalks which came back today, um, the future land use map uh, 20 uh, sparkle plan for 2600 Nicolay Drive, uh, CUP uh, for South Ashton Avenue, um, the PUD for temporary parking lot at Festival Foods uh, that'll be going through its, its ordinance readings, um, approving the plat right away map for Mather Street. Uh, the uh, continuance for easements, um, Thorndale and Ridge Road that's provided by the Benici project, um, and then receiving place and file for parked car policy, and then also receiving place and file the request about painted wall signs in the downtown district. So quite a hefty agenda item, but disposed of them all properly. Um, with that, I also just wanted to quickly uh, introduce, we have two new staff who started today. 
Um, Aaron Rosnick is going to be uh, working um, in our development services division, uh, working as a design specialist. Uh, so she'll be working uh, with the other planners um, and also, you know, throughout the department, helping us um, with some design work, um, some GIS work, and, and really, um, you know, helping us uh, go through concepts for and ideas for different places, um, helping us do some, you know, better mapping um, and, and design work. And then uh, Matthew Buchanan, uh, he is going to be working uh, as a development specialist. Uh, he replaces Julia Upfall, um, so he'll be working on the economic opportunity team. Um, working, I'm glad they're all here tonight with the beds. So if you haven't made introductions already, um, and doing a lot of the um, you know development work in those bid areas, also out in I-43, uh, and a number of other projects in, in the city. So just wanted to introduce them. Uh, they didn't have to come tonight, but you know just <laughs> <laughs> want to get off to a good start, so they decided to come. So I just wanted to welcome them and uh, make sure to introduce yourselves afterwards. Thank you. Welcome, sure. and I'm glad that you're both here. Mm -hmm. Look forward to um, seeing you in the future. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. Any other discussion? Yeah, I'd like <laughs> to uh, just, put the uh, ha I've got some input on the sidewalk situation from uh, my experiences as being an alderman uh, in new developments and everything. Uh, and I'm sure you'll probably come up with these different problems, but uh, uh, to not really put a sidewalk in until the, the construction is done and not put them on empty lots, give that some considerable thought because I've got, when I was uh, all in and I had some areas that weren't fully developed and you've got sidewalks going to nowhere and maybe one lot that's not really built, I think you should put some emphasis on the fact that when you get a certain percentage of, of buildings uh, in a certain block or line that uh, take weigh that into consideration that that sidewalk has to be put in otherwise the other sidewalks are and the other thing that can happen with the two is as you complete these houses and tell them to put the sidewalks in, sometimes that don't happen. So I, I think if you could set some parameters on what the whole block looks like, where they're going, where they are, especially in Red Smith School, we had to put sidewalks in there because it was safe passage to school by students. And that, that enters into it well. So, so please give that some consideration. Correct. Thanks. And I think that's part of the things that we're doing both in, in, in the code it. in Chapter 14, but then also just look yeah. administratively between us and the planning department and also public works, mm -hmm. how we coordinate those things in, in terms of timing and, and doing yeah. what makes sense and, and doing it in a way that, again, you know, ultimately gets us to what the, the code is intended to do. And there's certain builders that just don't like to do that. That's, be careful. Thanks. Understood. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nobody's opposed. Welcome. Thank you.